Hey guys, welcome. This is a general reading for all zodiac signs for the new moon in Virgo. Let me pull up my notes. Um, we have got this dynamic new moon occurring at 22 degrees of the sign of Virgo tonight at 9.39 p.m. Eastern Time. Now it may be in the middle of the night or the early hours of the morning across the pond and other points across the globe. Um, so do check your local listings. It could be in, on the 15th for some of you. So New moon in Virgo reaching its peak at 9.39 p.m. Eastern Time here on the East Coast on Thursday the 14th at 22 degrees of Virgo. And I'm going to jump right in and say the next day Mercury stations direct. And that is definitely something I know we've all been waiting for. It has been quite a slog. Venus already turned direct. Um, she went through her six-week trek uh, backwards through leo um so we've had some shifts in terms of our thoughts around relationships and our values what we value in matters of the heart um and now with mercury in virgo the sign he rules stationing direct um we should return to a more regular rhythm of life i know hard to believe um i hate to jinx it so <laughs> Uh, we still have um, all the outer planets will still be in the retrograde parade, but they don't impact us as much on the daily as the personal planets do. Um, so after tomorrow, we should all be feeling a lot. Um, a lot of the energy of difficulty and like moving through quicksand should begin to dissipate. So um, one of the most impactful um, uh aspects of this new moon is that it is forming an empowering vortex of called a grand earth trine so in astrology a trine think of the triangle um, is the most uh, supportive um, geometry it's very, it's where everything flows so it's really powerful that that's happening in earth signs and i'm going to tell you where it's happening so you can check your own chart but it, it creates a very grounded um, and earthy new moon where we can literally manifest our de desires into form because we have the support. So even if they're challenging planets and even if they are retrograde, it doesn't matter. The vortex of energy is very supportive. So we get the positive aspects of these planets. So we're going to start with the sun and the moon at 22 degrees of Virgo and then on one leg of the trine, going over to Capricorn, we have Pluto retrograde. I know, don't roll your eyes, but Pluto's going to give us the power to manifest our desires into form. Then on the other side, we have um, uh, Uranus and Jupiter in Taurus. So it's really more Uranus than Jupiter, but Jupiter is there to lend support and bring blessings and, um, and the benefit of good timing and good karma. So think of it as breakthroughs, no more breakdowns, the power to manifest what we desire into form, provided we stay realistic and reality-based. That those are the calling cards of Virgo. So um, yeah, it feels really good. Um, it, it is an excellent time to focus on work-related endeavors as well. Um, your mind, body, spirit, wellness is also involved in the Virgo mansion. And it's more about the daily routine, so not just a one and done. It's about getting back on track with all of those health-related things. Um, it's also, it rules um, um, uh, responsibilities, systems that make our life easier, streamlining some processes that have gotten too complex. So think about those things. It, it rules our, our pets, our little um, fur babies. So this is one of those new moons where you can make some reality-based practical, um, set some intentions that are super practical um, for your health, for your life, to make your life easy, um, to get back on track with things that have sort of fallen <laughs> by the wayside. Um, yeah, it also talks about service and duty, but not in a, a dark way, <laughs> not in a heavy way. Um, it talks about, you know, what lights you up, what, um, where do you best serve yourself, your home, your family, your friends, um, and the community at large. So that's what I have for you. 
Okay, really lovely new moon. So now I'm going to pull from um, Sacred Traveler. Let's just look to activate the reading. We'll look at where we've been, where we are, where we're headed. Get some flavor of that. Ooh, I love that. Yes. Oh, I like that too. So where we've been, uncovering treasure beneath the surface lies great bounty. Look at the dragon there, right? As we've been pulled through the retrograde of Mercury and Venus retrograde at the same time, um, a lot, a lot to review, a lot of diving the depths to uncover um, the hidden treasures. So what that means is things can be difficult, but we can come through it with a real gem, something that really... Um, uh, is very enlightening and that helps us not have to go back to that dark place again. So I sort of like it. Cleansing waters, now we have the purification. Purification activates vibrant life force. Like we're being cleansed here. Remember that Virgo is opposite Pisces and Neptune is retrograde in Pisces right now. So there is a little bit of an opposition, a little tangle there, um, a little tango, I should say, between the sun and the moon opposite Neptune. So Neptune in this case, it's more about spiritual purification, purifying, staying focused, purifying and cleansing, um, how we perceive ourselves as um, spiritual beings having a human experience. So I love that. And then where are we headed? Discovering truth. You stand in the light of truth. So this feels to me like there's something here that's going to be uncovered um, we've uncovered some treasure about ourselves during the retrograde we'll be discovering some truths going forward um, and as long as you stand in the light of truth you can't lose so now i'm going to jump into the reading let's go ahead uh pull the cards i'll give you my general impressions then we'll get some clarifiers for the details Please note, I'm going to do an abbreviated um, Celtic cross in the extended. I'm going to go all the way around the zodiac, Aries through Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. The link to that is in the top sentence of the description box below this video. So you can uh, watch for your own placements, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or be a cross watcher for your person. You've got up to eight messages, and I'm going to look at where, <laughs> where will you draw the power to manifest what you desire into form in your connection, right? Where is the breakthrough? Where do you have the power for the breakthrough? That's what we'll be looking at. Ooh, page of wands, four of cups, little disappointment here, not getting the good news that you've been wanting or waiting for, for some of you feeling sort of on your own, waiting for was the right way to say it. Yes, okay. <clears throat> so I think, I think you've been waiting. This is how it's coming through. The Four of Cups is that disappointment, disillusionment, um, can be a little bit of an emotional disconnection, right? And it's crossing this page of wands. And to me, this page of wands is the message. Somebody reaching out with good news, saying, saying hello, reconnecting. Um, you know, it can even be the page of wands can be flirtatious banter, or a, a text. It feels to me like some of you haven't heard from someone you've been waiting and hoping to hear from. So we have the hermit in your unconscious awareness. This is Virgo. This is feeling like you're on this solitary path. And look here how you're kind of levitating there. Um, this is the uncovering treasure. Beneath the surface lies great bounty. Even if you feel very alone in the situation, um, as long as you're focused on self-awareness and introspection, you can't go wrong. So even this time alone, feeling a little remote, reclusive, hiding out, it's okay. It makes sense. All that's turning a corner now um, with, this, with this powerful lunation. And here is Jupiter, the Wheel of Fortune. So I feel like in the past, it's like waiting for divine time. Well, three of wands, your wave is about to come in. So get ready to ride. And then here comes the communication, the eight of wands that you've been 
anticipating and waiting for. So we may be feeling a little down in the mouth right now, a little sad, a little disconnected, um, feeling very much maybe um, like, like not wanting to show ourselves to anyone in particular, kind of like I, I, I've been living this way for, for years now, this hermit energy, and I don't mean to, it's just that I've been processing a lot of things. So if you've been processing things, that's also in the hermit realm. So let's look at the Page of Wands and the Four of Cups. I have to shuffle these cards a different way than I normally do because it's very slippery. Yes, Knight of Wands, Nine of Wands, Seven of Wands. Yeah, there's been this um, in and out energy, I think, and you're, you're kind of uh, feeling a little disconnected. Like, when's this person coming back? When am I gonna hear from them again? The Nine of Wands not giving up, the Seven of Wands, there's some resistance there though. Um, and I don't know if that's your own resistance or if that's what's playing out behind the scenes, that somebody's just resisting, reaching out, communicating. This could be an on and off situation. So let's see the hermit in your unconscious awareness. I keep wanting to shuffle my normal way, but I can't with this deck or the cards just are too new. Tower. Eight of Swords, Eight of Cups. Okay, so feels to me like this is not a sustainable situation. You're feeling very stuck. Um, and in this Hermit energy, what you're contemplating there um, is, you know, throwing in the towel and um, continuing on your path. So this is what you're processing in your unconscious awareness. It's heavy. Tower and Eight of Swords, feeling very stuck, overthinking the situation possibly a little bit, but maybe also second guessing yourself. Um, so that's why you've pulled yourself out of circulation as it were, or um, have gone a little bit off the grid because you're really trying to process what you should do about this situation. Um, if somebody's resisting you, maybe it's run its course and it's time for you to move forward. But because we have the wheel, the wheel in the past, we're looking at divine time, we're looking at Jupiter's energy here. <clears throat> looking at where the um, karma is. There. Ten of Cups, Eight of Wands, Six of Wands. So this suggests to me that you have been indeed um, waiting for the wheel to turn in your favor, for the divine time to come in with the happiness of a good, like long conversation that provides a lot of reconciliation, making peace, sort of meeting in the middle and forging a win-win outcome that brings in this happiness. So in the past, I sort of feel like you turned it over to divine time. That's the way it's coming through. And now you're like, well, where is it? <laughs> I've turned it all over and nothing's happening. I'm just being resisted. Um, I'm, I'm persevering, but the on and off of it all, the in and out of it all is not sustainable. And I feel stuck. I don't know what to do. I'm searching myself, hermit, but I don't know what to do. So let's look at the three of wands. Three of Wands on the Three of Wands, Two of Cups, Two of Swords. Yeah, um, you're reaching a crossroads. You know you have a decision to make, right? Are we going to get this all on on board? Is is that wave coming in that I'm, I'm meant to ride all the way to happiness and this connection? Or is it time for me to decide to go another way? So I do feel... Um, notice that the two of swords though is coming from the bottom of the deck. So that's something you're you're it still feels connected to what 
um, the hermit's processing, right? This isn't sustainable. I have an important decision to make. I've reached a crossroads. You're waiting, you're anticipating that powerful wave of this beautiful um, soul connection, but you're only meeting with resistance and there's been no conversation. You've been waiting for this person to reach out or for a conversation that would, you know, maybe kick things up again. Um, and now we're going to see with this Eight of Wands, because that was in the past that you've, you know, decided, well, when the time is right, you know, it'll happen in divine time. And now we have the Eight of Wands in the near future. Hermit again. There's the Emperor. Six of Pentacles. I feel like this person is going to reach out. Um, it will... Uh, initiate a pe period of some back and forth, some reciprocity, some give and take. You're still here with hermit energy. And this could happen in Virgo season. And we only have a, a, a week or two left of that. Not even. 10 days left. Um, so it could happen in Virgo season. I'm saying that because of the heavy energy of the hermit. But it feels to me like the communication will come in. This is coming from your emperor. I do feel that it opens up the dialogue about the reciprocity, the give and take, um, them being gener as generous with you, with their time, as you are with them, with your time, right? That's really what the Six of Pentacles is talking about. And right now I feel like it seems to me that you see it as this person is only around when it's convenient for them or when, you know they're inspired for uh, their own purposes and that's not really sustainable and so you're kind of feeling alone i do feel though with this hermit here in the near future that the only um caution the only red flag i see is if you're too closed off so be sure that you're emerging from the cage <laughs> the cage the cave um with your wisdom right with what you've learned about yourself that's uncovering treasure that's what you've been doing um, so that you can purify the situation so you can speak clearly and then you can discover the truth of this person's um, willingness to be equally invested in the connection it's that simple they're either in or they're out but they can't be in and out and in and out and in and out so that's what I feel this reading is about. Let me tell you the astrology. We have here the Page of Wands is Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. The Knight of Wands is Sagittarius. The Hermit is out twice. That's Virgo. The Tower is Mars, which rules Aries. Um, the Wheel of Fortune is Jupiter, which rules Sagittarius. A lot of Sag energy here. Um, we have the Emperor, which is also Aries. So lots of fire in this reading um can't wait to see what we pull for the extended remember it's all zodiac signs so you can get little mini readings um good for sun moon rising venus and we're going to see the um you know where you're getting your power and your breakthrough uh in this particular new moon so that's what we'll do new moon blessings to all of you thanks for joining me i'll see you at the extended bye for now